After their MiG-21 shootdown on March 28, 1970, Lieutenant Jerry Bollier and Lieutenant Junior Grade Steve Barkley, sporting his famous mustache, a VF-142, eagerly inspected a celebratory bottle of champagne, perhaps taken from the carrier battle group commander. Both men were Top Gun grads from the very first class, and Barkley had served as a pilot in the USAF. When he thought back on his many years of working with Jerry, he said, Being a bit older and possibly more focused on quality and survival, our missions tended to be quite well planned and by our book. Nobody ever saw a MiG at that stage of the war, much less get within sparrow range of a bandit. Despite this, they meticulously planned their strategy for such a situation and conducted numerous barcap missions in the hopes of being able to attract a MiG to the surface of the sea. According to Peter E. Davies' account in U.S. Navy F-4, Phantom II units of the Vietnam War, 1969-1973, on March 28, 1970, Bollier and Barkley were launched in F-4J Dakota 201, Bureau No. 15575, as the replacement spare for VF-142 Commanding Officer Ruel E. Gardner, in a cap flight led by CVW-14 Commander and F-8 MiG Killer Commander Paul Spear. They carried three external fuel tanks, two AIM-7Es and three AIM-9Ds in preparation for a prolonged fighter sweep. The flight, which was vectored into MiG-21s by Petty Officer White aboard the destroyer USS Horn, DLG-30, the day's Red Crown radar control ship, included a third F-4J with the crew of Lieutenant Commander Gary Hakenson and Lieutenant Junior Grade Dave Van Astlin. At the 25-mile range, they were cleared to fire AIM-7Es, but Hackinson's radar was inoperative, and Barclays also died as they approached the target, ruling out Sparrow launches. I was really disappointed. The perfect setup for a head-on shot and no radar. I fought it for about five miles and then gave up, recalled Barkley. It was later realized that the radar in Spears F-4 was also faulty, being limited to a one-mile range. Bollier closed after spotting the MiGs 10,000 feet above them. The MiGs dove in their direction as the F-4Js rose to intercept. Bollier wheeled behind the leading MiG-21, but his F-4 quickly ran out of fuel since he was still towing three external tanks that created drag. The first MiG's Atoll attempt at Spears Phantom II was unsuccessful, but Bollier pursued the second MiG using a lag pursuit strategy to put him in position for an AIM-9D hit. The missile's seeker head wasn't properly set, yet it still managed to explode inside the MiG-21's exhaust. We stopped and got a look as the unlucky aircraft fell into the cloud below us at the MiG's 4 o'clock position. We never witnessed an ejection, Barkley observed. Famthan Nam, an inexperienced 921st FR pilot, perished in the collision. As the rules of engagement, ROE, at the time prohibited assaults on MiGs, unless they threatened a reconnaissance or barcap mission. The F-4 crew's success could not be acknowledged publicly. Eventually, a report was made public that claimed Bollier's MiG-21 had been intercepted as it was attacking an RA-5C. A MiG kill was a significant accomplishment for the F-4 pilots, especially during a period of relatively limited activity on the ground. Successful crews were also honored with specially crafted cakes, widespread media coverage, and congratulations visits with top war managers. Even though aircraft carriers were primarily platforms for attack aircraft, similar praise for successful assault aircrew, and missions was uncommon. <laughs>